hi everybody it's really good that you're joining us um i am lynn chung um and i'm here in my new studio space in buxton i might show you uh, around a little bit in a minute everybody in Hi Lynn. Hi Lynn. Hi Lisa. Hi. Hi Lisa. Trisha. Trisha. Excellent. So yeah, so welcome to Live Art Chat. This is the third time we've done this, isn't it, Sally Ann? Yeah. Um, this month we are, um, I'm going to be demonstrating and painting. Um, I've literally, I have quite literally this morning finished moving into my new studio. Um, in fact, I'm still really in the process of doing it. There's loads of stuff all over the place, um, but we're getting there. It's really exciting, actually, because you've done this recently as well, haven't you, sally -Ann? Yeah, it's a very interesting experience, actually. I mean, I was just saying to her, the amount of stuff that you discover that you didn't realise that you'd got, and you kind of find, I find myself thinking, why have I kept this? Because, you know, I've got like, goodness knows how many. I've just found, I think, at least four bottles of white, supposedly white paint, which are just like, you know, horrible, dried up, grotty, tiny, little, tiny bits just left in the bottom. And I'm thinking, what am I doing that for? So that's been interesting. <laughs> I'm yeah. a damn good clear out. <laughs> yeah, I'm mean, a damn good clear out. I'll just keep chatting for a minute while people are hopping on so that we don't miss anybody. Um, so what about you, Salim? What have you been up to this last week or two since we um, did the last episode? Well, I am still moving into my studio, it feels like. Um, I've just had a lot of time because one of my things about moving to the studio, I wanted to get my summer workshops up and running. So I've had to sort of be planning the workshop, planning like the marketing and flyers around that. So I haven't actually had the opportunity to paint only on our last live demo. Um, and that's yeah. how you knew how I was. And I was a bit like, oh, where's my brushes? Where's my paint? Um, so I haven't really got past that stage yet. Um, I'm hoping to this weekend, um, now I've got everything in place, I feel like, right, that's all done so I can concentrate on, you know, painting more now. Yeah, um, I think it, I think it's definitely going to take me a while to get settled. Um, I mean, it's not as big a move, I don't think, mine as yours, because what I've done is swap rooms. So I was in a small, smallish room on the top floor and I had a, a much larger room downstairs that I was using as an office. And I just thought, actually, this is a bit daft because, you know, I need bigger studio space. I think one of the things that was um, holding me back, actually, was the feeling of like, like this is interesting, you know, in terms of it on a process level, like, can I take up this much space with my art in this in our house? because it is the main, it's one of the bigger rooms at the front of the house, you know, kind of, it would normally be a dining room, but because the way the house, the size of the house and the way it's laid out is quite an old property, we've got a big living room on the first floor. So we've already got a living room. So it just felt like I was like dominating, you know, by taking up this space. I just thought it was really interesting, you know, like give myself permission. Yeah. To say, actually, you know, I am an artist, this is important and it is okay to take this space. So it's been, it's been fascinating actually, I that bit. I think we feel that even from moving literally from the kitchen table or the tiny space you're taking up in the front room or whatever, I think we feel that all the way along. It's, yeah. you know, ca can I do this? Um, am I, yeah, it's like taking up the space. Um, even when I moved to uh, this workshop, this studio, obviously it's huge. And I kept thinking, right, okay, so I need to do things for the community. I need to do these, this, this. And I was like going to get in touch with the local council and stuff because I just, I think there's part of me that felt I don't deserve this whole space. And it's, yeah. it is a real mindset thing because I thought, Sunny Ann, you're flipping while paying for it. You know, it's like yeah. Yeah. I, nobody else is supporting me doing this, but it's still this weird thing about, you know, am I ready for this? Am I this? And I think that's literally, I, I used to feel that in a flat I lived in from the, like I said, the kitchen worktop moving into a room. Do yeah. I deserve that whole room? And it's, I don't know. Yeah. So I think we just have to, yeah. you have to give yourself the permission and be like, yes, this, you know, I can take up this space and my art is important to me. And, you know, I think that's at every level. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So that's an interesting one, I think. I'd be interested. And also, you know, I'm going to just see how I feel, you know, with that over the next sort of few weeks and mm. see if it still stays with me. I don't think it is doing, actually. I think, you know, having recognised I was doing it, I just thought, well, that's just daft because that's yeah. not true. You know, like, yeah. I can, I'm going to take this space and yeah. actually I'm going to really maximise it because it feels great. So, yeah. I know, so that's kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's been interesting. 
Okay, so we've got quite a lot more people still hopping on, so that's good. Um, how are we doing? Oh, I just muted you by mistake. I think I might have done. Sorry, Sally Ann. That's all right. Somebody, I just heard somebody pop on and. No, I think that's everybody. That is everybody. Okay. Um, so, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be demonstrating from my studio here. In fact, I might just give you a. Are you interested in guys and seeing a quick look at the new space? And then I'll talk to you about what I'm going to be um, painting. So, I will share screen. Um, there we go. That's it. So, everybody should be able to see, everybody see that okay, nice and clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Cool. Brilliant. So, yes, this is my new space. So, and um, we just, that's it, so we can rotate the camera. So I've got some shelving there in the corner. I will be using that as a gallery wall when I do open studios, which I've got one actually coming up at the end of July. Um, I'm gonna have some racking built over in that far corner where you can just, the other side of the filing cabinet, that's going upstairs. Mm -hmm. I've still got a random sofa in here, which needs to go somewhere and I haven't found any space for that yet. Um, I don't think it'll stay actually because it'll get completely trashed if it stays and it'll get yeah. in the paint. And this is a bit that I've been so excited about, which is it's mad, isn't it? What we get excited about. But this um, kind of countertop for painting on, which is just, you know, it's so lovely to be able to say the exact height that I wanted yeah. it at. So it would be, you know, it would just right for me, which just yeah. feels really great. So I've got loads of storage underneath and then I've got these little um, like drying rats there and you can see a lot of the work that I've been working on actually over the last few months. So I'm in the middle of doing a sm series of small paintings, which these little six by sixes that you can see. Um, and then I've got some big ones as well on the go as well. So actually I'll just walk around and do that that way so that I can. So Lynn, just a quick question while you're there. So you've built your countertop, that looks quite high. So you're yeah. standing then, you've not made yeah, you stand, so everything's a standing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I always stand when I paint. I don't like to sit down. I get really stiff in the back of my neck right. and my shoulders. And actually, um, I like to actually move around when I'm when I'm working because there's something I think about the physicality of being more connected. When I'm sitting down, I think I can get really static and locked in yeah. to I feel quite uh, restricted. I you? feel restricted. Yeah. Whereas I think when I'm on my feet, it feels much better. Yeah. So yeah. So oh, I love it. I just I just know the the feeling. I don't know if anybody else uh, feels the same. But just looking around, and I'm so excited for you. Do you know, and you just think like you've got your wall there, and it's it's so important how we set ourselves up and. Like it really is. It really is. That's how yeah. you work on the drying racks, and you know, definitely. Yeah, because one of the things I, I noticed quite recently was I was attempting to do a, a diptych on a couple of um, meter square uh, panels um, canvases, and I just couldn't get far enough back from them in the room upstairs to be able to see the whole of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so in the end, I just gave up. I just thought, actually, I'm just not going to be able to do this. Um, I just I'll wait, you know, until I've got more space. Whereas here, you know, if I stand across the opposite side of the room, I can actually I can see I can get three three one meter panels on this wall now and be able to see the whole of them, you know, and it will feel very wow. different. Thing. Yeah. So so today's painting is the one that you can see in the middle here. Uh, I thought what I'd do is because often artists, when they're demonstrating, they show um, they'll often show, won't they, work that um, maybe they're at the beginning of a piece, or maybe they're in the middle, or sometimes we we show the ending um, and the finishing. This is something that I was working on a while ago that I kind of I completely lost the will to live with, and it's been sitting um, kind of you know against the wall for probably, let's just think, maybe best part of a year, something like that. And I finally found it when I was um, kind of, you know, bringing everything down. I just thought, actually, it might be quite interesting just to, just to, you know, demonstrate on this and just see what happens. I've got no idea if I'm going to be able to, um, you know, turn this into a, to turn this into a workable painting or if it's going to be a complete disaster. Um, but I thought what I would do is just have a go and see. So, so um, it was, I think originally, it was this way round. Um, and it had got a, as you can see, you can sort of see, there's quite, there's been quite a lot of oil pastel on it, but most of that is actually pretty dry now, I think. And I don't think it will disrupt the acrylic particularly. Um, that bit might actually there. Um, 
Yeah, so it's got some interesting texture on it, um, but it is, because it's had quite a lot of paint on it already, it's quite smooth, so that might, may, that may or may not work um, okay. in terms canvas, of the surface, or... working on the surface. Is it a canvas or a board? It's canvas. Yeah, it's a canvas. So I think, I think what we might do is rotate it around in a completely different direction. That's it, and start from there and just see what happens see what happens this is really interesting for me because um i don't know about everybody else on the call but i have so many unfinished paintings like boxes that i brought to this studio so i'd be interested to hear your thoughts um yeah. About this. yeah well in many respects it's an experiment you yeah. know what i don't know is will i end up working um into this and completely you know going over everything that there is everything and it will be just like it's a blank canvas and i'm just starting you know and um almost treating that as an underpainting or will i actually keep some of the elements that are there and, and see what happens so there will be some significant shifts in color though i think because i'm going to go to the um palette that i'm using you have to let that person in so yeah it's a major co-host haven't yeah. i so yeah Brilliant. So is there anything, when you look at that now, is there anything you like about it at the moment? I actually quite like this grey. Okay. Yeah, I like this grey. Um, I did really like that, um, but then it got lost, I think. What it was got lost in the, it, it, kind of as a painting developed. So I think what I probably need to do with that, because I think what was happening when I was painting it before, was I was trying to hold on to that. I was doing that very, you know, that kind of classic thing that we do sometimes of falling in love with a bit of the painting and then trying to paint around it. Yeah. Um, and that, I think what that was resulting in was it was just not working. So I think because of that, I probably, well, I do, I need to, you know, just forget about that and just go with something completely fresh. In fact, I think I might even go with a bigger brush. It's not big enough. Let's get... So I've not painted for maybe, I don't know, three weeks, four weeks. And before that, I was um, mainly doing my um, directions and abstraction course. So even though I was painting, I was sort of done doing a lot of demonstration work. So I'm not actually kind of really focused on my own particular work in the way that we do sometimes when we're deeply involved in painting a series of work or something for quite some time. So that'll be interesting as well from that perspective is to just see what that feels like. So do you feel um, like when you've not painted for a while, do you feel, are you anxious at all or are you, what do you uh, feel? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Well, maybe momentarily, there's sort of that question of, this is one of the things that I definitely feel quite a bit. So my, my particular um, anxious process will be around, can I do this again or am I going to just feel that actually it's all a fluke? <laughs> Yeah. I can't paint at all, which, you know, I kind of go, yeah, okay, I mean, that's old stuff, let's just forget about that and get on with it, um, you know, so I do, I mean, like then, you know, I find myself pausing and thought, you know, there's no point in doing that, I just need to jump in, just jump in and, yeah. and start painting and see what happens, really. Okay. Which is generally what I'll do, just, you know, not let yourself, I think you know, it's important to not let yourself be um sidelined by stuff like that you know not to take it seriously yeah interesting. Probably some rearranging have to go on later <laughs> so have you pre-mixed the colors you're going to be using today like um, I've, yeah i've got a load of colors pre-mixed because i've been working on some big paintings so I'm going with those. Because um, I suppose what I want to do with this particular piece is bring it into the current series that I'm working on. Are those either side of it part of that series? Yes, they are, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anybody has any 
questions you could hey, shout out please yeah come off of mute or pop them in the chat or something and i'll, I'll pick them up Feels much more interesting already. So for this new series you're working on, Lynn, um, previously you were looking at a, a framework of sort of look, focusing on edges. Are you yes. continuing that? Yes, I am. Yeah, definitely. That still feels like I'm still exploring that and all the possibilities that there are within that, really. Uh, still feels really interesting. Yeah, so I don't want to, I don't want to stop until it, until I, you know, until it, it stops being interesting. Yeah. Okay, so Laura said later on, can we have a closer look at the paintings on either side? Um, she loves the colours of those. And Catalina, uh, maybe you could move the camera focus on the painting. Is that not? Uh, uh, I can't. No, I can't. Um, I can get closer, but it's a webcam, so it's uh, it's fixed. Okay. Is that better? Um. I mean, that looks fine to me. Is that better for everybody? Yeah, I've got a few nods. Yeah. Yeah. The thing with this is that I might occasionally forget where the camera is and stick my head in front of it, in which case <laughs> I might need to shout out. Because <laughs> it can be, you know, when you get a bit immersed in what you're doing. I'm sorry if there's background noise from my end as well. I'm surrounded by industrial buildings with quite rowdy people sometimes, <laughs> it gets a bit loud. <laughs> You're noticing know, a lot of difference, sally Ann, being in a, um, an industrial area rather than being in a, in a house. Because you, your studio was in your hand before, wasn't it? Yes, and yeah, I, I already, I, I just love being here and each morning if I'm, I try to be in the studio really early, but I go for a little wander just around the buildings. Um, it's only like a loop where I am, but they're, they're quite, I don't know how old they are. Um, maybe not much more than 20 or 20 years old or so, but the, I just love looking at the textures and the, you know, like the industrial style roofs and windows. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a feeling that will play out in my work somehow. Yeah, so kind of inspiration, a different sort of inspiration yeah. right on the doorstep, literally out the door. Yeah, literally out my window. I did an impromptu photo shoot this morning with some of my paintings and just sort of put them on random walls and doorways. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, Linda, is that on a canvas? Uh, yes, Linda, this is um, it's a deep box canvas, isn't it? Linda? Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, Linda, you may not have heard uh, Lynn at the beginning. She said this was um, a painting that had quite a lot of layers built up already, so the surface was quite smooth. Yeah. A bit closer, and I could do the space to move back a bit, but it's a bit tricky. Cause... Uh, you can move back a, a little bit if you need to, Lynn. Um, I can't because I'm trapped. Oh, right. <laughs> I literally managed to box myself in to uh -oh. a corner. I'm just thinking about what I want to bring in in terms of some. Actually, maybe I'll leave that bright bit up there. Um, Nancy right. has asked, what type of paint are you using? Any additives? Uh, no, just um, your basic um, acrylic. Um, so if it's pre-mixed, but student quality actually, well, I'm saying not necessarily, actually, no, not student quality. Um, 
some of it's student quality actually, but some of it is um, slightly better quality than that. I tend not to use stuff like golden and, and things like that because um, money is just prohibitively expensive actually. Mm -hmm. And do you just mix all the different qualities of paint together? No, oh, sorry. Do you just mix them all together, whether they're regardless of like how you say student quality or professional? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, maybe I ought to be a bit more precious about it, but I'm not, to be honest with you. So. Just a question from Nancy. What type of brushes are you using? Um, as in the make? Um, I'm not sure. She just said, what type of brushes? Are they flat or round? Uh, or... OK. Yeah, so they are um, fairly inexpensive, actually. It's a hog varnish brush. This is a hog varnish brush. So it's quite stiff bristles, um, quite rough bristles, um, that leave quite interesting marks. Um, I need to duck under the camera to just do it. Get a bit of distance from that and have a quick look and see what we think about that. Okay, that feels a bit more interesting. I might need to just. Back a what bit. size is that, Lynn? Uh, oh, good question. Uh, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I'm really useless with sizes. I think it's probably that's 16 by 16. I it must be about 16. It's a 20 by 20, I think. Yeah, oh. looking at that, it's 20 by 20. Um, so, in terms of my thinking whilst I've been doing this, just to kind of explain for people, because I haven't actually been talking that much about it, as you can see, I've kept some of the original um, colours and shapes in this already. Um, so that area was already there, wasn't it? I've left that pretty much as it was, actually. That orange I've scraped back so that it's caught on a texture underneath, and I really like how that's turned out, actually. Um, I'm not sure about that bit. I am um, yet to kind of decide what I want to do with that. Um, and that grey, even whilst I like it, um, because I've not put any fresh paint over the top of it, it feels like it's somehow it needs something doing with it because it's not sitting alongside the other kind of paint that's really well. Um, same with this green, actually, which is what I'm about to do now. Um, I might use this completely, no, as I say, use it completely unsaturated, but. Um, be saturated, saturated rather, but I will just mess around with it a bit. Yes. 
It's funny how that grey, um, like you said, doesn't feel as um, just maybe not, I don't know the word, not as present maybe because you've only just done the other layers, but maybe it's because of the, um, even though the colours look like they're really harmonising, probably because it's from an old palette and not this one, it's not, they're not quite harmonised, you know. Yeah, maybe exactly. that's what's making it feel, feel a bit different. Now you guys won't be able to see what I'm doing here with this green, but what I'm doing is brush, dry brushing really very lightly over this orange patch. And what's happening is little, little tiny bits of this sort of olive green are just catching on the, um, the bits that are standing proud um, within the orange. And, you know, just little tiny bits that you can see when you were getting really close. And I've, it's one of the things I do a lot in my work. So when you, you know, you can't see it very often, even sometimes in photography, it's difficult to catch. You often only get to see that when you're getting really close to the painting. So I've done it there on the blue and it's a lot more obvious there on the blue. And what I'll do with that is then, I'll let it dry actually, but then I will repeat, go over the top of that and just, that's it knock it back a bit um, yeah. so that it's just I might do more of that here actually because it feels like that that this area of blue is just a bit dead in many respects it's not very exciting yeah that suddenly feels a lot more interesting yeah. when you start to do that to it probably the same thing that's going on here actually even though you've just put that on top of the blue from here, because we're further away, like through a screen, it could almost be the other way around, like the green was underneath and the blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I agree, Danielle, watching the paintings transformation is fascinating. It is. And isn't it nice to watch somebody else paint and not have to make the decisions? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> You know, I'm just thinking that I just absolutely love paint. Yeah. Just the texture going on. Yeah, the that. texture and what you can do with it and the way it behaves on different surfaces. And, yeah. You know, it just feels like it's an endless exploration, really, of um, all the things that you can, all the ways you can play with it and explore with it. And yeah, just it's just fascinating. Really fascinating. And one of the things I particularly like doing is, um, you know, and you, I think you do this quite a lot in your work as well, don't you, Sally Ann? It is, oh, I've just got paint on my arm. Is really subtly changing um, what you're doing with the colour. So, you know, one of the things I've just done there with that olive green, I've added a tiny little bit more of black, red, um, and then dogged the end of my brush into, you know, some of the colours I'm working with and then mix that into the green as well. So that it, you know, it's very, very subtly different to what I've already put here. As you go yeah. over the top there. Yeah. See? And then, you know, it just, I just think it, you know, enlivens the painting so much more when you start to do stuff like that. It just adds such areas of interest it's like it adds an, an extra depth as well you know just like the tiny changes um and all the colors are always going to harmonize because like you say you dip your brush in a bit of that a bit of that yeah. And, yeah. yeah so more questions anybody no danielle said um she agrees and she uh she gets um, decision fatigue sometimes <laughs> watching this is relaxing. <laughs> yeah. So I need to resolve this area here. I'm not quite sure I'm going to do it. So I'm going to go and get a bit of distance from it, I think, for a minute and just have a little think, have a little look and a think. Um, okay, so as I'm starting here, as I'm looking at it, what I'm noticing is that there's a diagonal from that um, blue kind of loop that there was on it before um, and I think that's the bit that 
I'm not enjoying, so that needs to go. Um, I'll just do a rotation actually, see what that does as well. Sometimes it can give us a different perspective, can't it? If you really want that, so we think that. Right, so you can see a bit more clearly. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, I think I like it the other way, definitely. Yeah, it gives a little bit. What does it do when it when I do it that way? I think because I've got that light at the top, actually, um, it makes it feel less abstract. It's that thing that you know when sometimes if you've got light at the top, it can start to imitate. Um, a landscape or an architectural scene or something like that. So even though it's very much an abstract painting, I think, because that light there, even though that bit's dark, you've also got this area here, which I think gives a sense of gravity, which then I think makes it feel like it's some kind of, you know, you'd start to look to try, I think I might start to look to try and find, you know, things in it that relate to landscape or architecture or something. Whereas I think when you put it that way around, because you've got a much darker set of shapes across the top, I don't think that happens quite so much. So I'm going to try and see if I can mix something that's close to that colour. Although I can't remember, I quite remember what it was, but one other guy. Laura's jealous of your peg wall. <laughs> jealous of the painting wall. Yeah, with all uh, the yeah, it's yeah. It's so it's, much easier, isn't it? Yeah, it makes such a huge difference. It really does make a massive difference. Even a small one, mm -hmm. you know, makes a big difference, I think. Just being able to, um, you know, get some distance and work yeah. work upright like this and not on an easel. I think that's pretty close. No, no, it's not. Uh, mm. You ever work flat, Lynn? On your table? Yeah, yeah. And I know some people like to work on the floor. But I've got no idea how they do I think my back would kill me if I tried to do that. <laughs> that is... I worked on the floor for years until I um Did you? Yeah, yeah. Until I've had a space. Um I, I enjoyed it as well. But I wanted to stand up for ages and ages. <laughs> I wanted a painting wall for a long time. And now I have one, I'm enjoying it, but I'm going through different techniques that I shared in our last live with like more watery glazes and stuff. So then I'm yeah. working flat again. <laughs> That's okay, so much just yeah, that's close enough, I think. Um, Danielle said, I wonder if I could use the IKEA pegboards in this way. Um, I don't worth trying. Yeah, I don't know. I can't visualise what they... Uh, have, like how the depth of the pegs or anything. So, but you could try for sure. I mean, in my last uh, setup, in not not in my home studio, I just had, but the one before, I had I just put plywood. It was about um, eighteen mil thick plywood. I just put that onto the wall, and I didn't have it all measured out like this. I just used to randomly put the screws in wherever, and it did end up being obviously really messy because of all the screw holes. Um, but I just wasn't set up very well at that time. I wasn't as organized. Um, yeah. And that worked just to like, you know, randomly screw them in. Sorry guys, booted the camera. It's not what does this God, it's just gonna muttering going on whilst I'm thinking to myself. Um, oh that's loads better actually now I've got rid of that um, strange diagonally thing. Glasses, actually. 
Uh, yeah, that uh, bit just looks stronger now, doesn't it? Just yeah, it does. It's, yeah, just yeah it was distracting, wasn't it, I think? Just more definite. Um, yeah. Okay, I think I'm at the point where I need to start putting some oil pastel on this. Um, it often feels a bit risky in some ways because, um, you know, once it's on, it's on. Particularly on a canvas, it's less easy to remove, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's do some definitely need to be more reorganized, but that's not right yet. Okay. So we're gonna go with this kind of colour, which is not an exact match for that, but it's quite close and I think it it kind of tones in quite nicely. So I agree, Laura. I always look forward to the scribbly bit. <laughs> started doing this as well which is to actually put you know like use the oil pasta to create shapes rather than just doing lines which has been quite interesting Are, are you thinking anything in particular when you're drawing your um, lines? I'm thinking about wanting to make to connect the left and the right and to make sure that I don't end up with a painting of two halves, particularly when it comes to the line work, because that can sometimes be a bit of a, a sort of um, a thing that I can inadvertently do. Um, okay. Wanted to keep it as loose as possible, actually. Um, what else am I thinking? I'm not really thinking anything other than spontaneously wanting to connect things, I think, make connections between things. This might end up being a bit heavy, actually. I don't know. We'll see. Are you still conscious at this point? Like you just said, then that's a bit heavy so are you thinking that these some of these lines now might stay or are you still in quite a free mode where you think I've got a long way to go or um kind of be covered hang on a sec sorry just, um okay in terms of this I, I think in terms of the lines what I'll probably do with them is um put them in like this and then scratch over them probably and knock some of them back by using a palette knife. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, because at the moment they do feel a little bit like they're very much sitting on the surface of the painting. So what I might do is something like this. Okay, to thin yeah. them. Yeah, just knock them back a bit. 
particularly like this really strong black one. At the same time, I do want that in, but I just might not want it quite as harsh as that. Actually, that feels better already to me. Um, Linda just asked, uh, how much of your work is planned or designed in advance? None of it. Not a, nary a bit, it all completely kind of spontaneous in the moment kind of working. Although, I mean, I say that, I mean, you know, the individual paintings are like that. In terms of um, what I'm currently working on it as a, an overall structure, um, which is that, um, sorry, I need to stop, I can't do that and as well as speak at the same time. Um, I'm working within a, a particular palette and a particular framework of ideas in terms of the painting. So most of the forms around the edges you can see here, there's a lot of squares, a lot of blocks. I'm very interested in how things meet, the transitions between shapes and forms. So they're all the things that I'm kind of exploring in the work, which means that whenever I, even though each painting is, um, you know, it's not thought out before, that's the structure that I'm working within, which I think makes it, does make it easier, definitely, in terms of having at least some kind of idea of direction in terms of where I'm going. Um, I hope that answers the question. So we're going to take sticky. Um, yeah, I'm so, I might just what is that black that you're using? It's um it's oil pastel. It's a giant oil pastel by Sennelier. And they're the same as the thin one, the smaller ones, just yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's very it's very sticky and very thick. Um but also, you know, as a result of that, really quite nice to work with. And what I'm going to do, having just put that on, is just put some paint now across the top of that. Oh, yeah, it's just... Uh, I feel like that's really interesting then. Um, what I might do is I'll just lift that a bit. I love that sound then, Lynn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hit on something you like. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So I think I'm just going to get more, more distance from that. See if there's more I want to do to that from there. I think at this point I'd probably leave that actually now. Probably wasn't doing any more to that and leave that for a day or so and see how I felt about it in a few days. And I would still be doing some tweaking. So I definitely want to scratch into a lot of those oil pastel lines and squares. Um, I might want to still bring about some more activation really of some of the edges and the transitions, making them a bit looser and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But it feels like that feels like now that that's the basis of the painting that I could take forward. Um, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, I said, I wasn't quite sure if it would work or not. I think it did. So that's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Made quite a lot of progress in that. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, shall we uh, look at your other ones? Um, yeah. My and just have a quick um yeah definitely yeah because people said they wanted to see those didn't they so i was putting them in there from there so these are um this is the first pass on both of these um not um finished yet so literally one you know coat of paint very thin feels very thin um so i'll probably be working on those um, the rest of the afternoon actually now that i've kind of got that one going and that's got me loosened up and in the mood. Um, I think I would, I will come back to these and see where I want to take these. Um, same kind of process actually that you see me work through with that. You know, I'll be able to use what's already there um, as a kind of interesting jumping off point. I think it's like you were talking about. You know, having an interesting underpainting. Um, you know, as part of the the initial kind of first few layers of paint, just make it so much more interesting. Then I think when you want to work further and add more onto it yeah yeah definitely it's nice to have something to respond to um and you just 
you just don't know where it's going to go, do you? So at least if you've got some lines. Um, can I just ask, when did you paint these two? Oh, good question. Um, I think there were demonstration paintings from my last open studio, which would have been back in February. Okay. The reason so, I ask yeah. is because there's such a difference in the line work, how I just asked you a second ago, what are you thinking um, mm. about the lines? And everything was quite linear you know you it had a lot of structure in the ones you've just done whereas when I look at these it felt like you're in a different you know yeah. it wasn't today's painting because of they've got curves and uh, other things and I was actually thinking I'm sure Lynn used to have uh, you know some curves so it just shows you the shift in us doesn't it yeah yeah and I have still got paintings with curves in actually um and even some quite it's almost like it's like, what am I interested in today? Today, I feel like I want to do that square, linear, blocky, you know, kind of stuff. But then tomorrow it might be, oh, I've actually quite fancy putting a few of those curves in. So for example, these, um, I'll just, oh, I can do it over there actually, which are still work in progress really, because I'm, I'm not completely satisfied with them. Um, but these are from not that long ago and, you know, they've got swirly marks in. Ah, yes, yeah. But a bit, a bit of both, really, a bit of the swirl and a bit of the, um, yeah. you know, kind of more linear straight yeah. stuff. And some of these... That's uh, an interesting, um, interesting palette in the middle there. Yeah, the one I've just put up? Yeah. yeah. I really like the uh, soft, I don't know if it is cream, it looks cream from here, but the soft cream with the... Black. Yeah, this in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a sort of creamy, creamy off-white, really, and then this sort of pink and the green and the black and the orange and the dark red. Yeah. yeah, I was sort of experimenting again, really, just to see what happened. You know, and I've got the same, similar kinds of, um, it's not so successful action. Uh, yeah, some of those sort of, um, there we go. yeah, curve marks happening on some of these little um, six by sixes that I'm working on. So, you know, that one, for example. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, they're finished, aren't they? The six by sixes. Some of them, one or two of them are, some of them aren't. I'm still in the kind of middle of doing this, really. I'm planning on doing as many as I, well, I'll say as many as I can. Um, I'm planning on doing about 50. Um, I've got 20 done, roughly, nice. so far. So there's quite a lot more that I still want to do. But I want to kind of do them as a big show. So yeah. I'm going to wait and see, yeah, how I get on with that. At the I moment, I'm waiting for Jackson's to get some more in, so. Oh. The only reason I said it, when you just put that one in front of the camera, it had a real like rich feel. So has that one been varnished? Yeah, yeah, I've um, I'm not varnished actually. I've just done the gloss medium on that. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, but yes, yeah, it does make a big difference. It does make a big difference. So, so shall I, I'll just stop sharing my screen and just come back to my main camera. Um, yeah. Laura Heard said, love the pink with the aqua. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And uh, lots of thank yous and really inspiring. So. That's good. I'm glad people are enjoying it. <laughs> so um, anything else to say in the last sort of 10 minutes or so? Actually, I suppose we wanted to just let people know, didn't we, about things that we're doing in case anybody's local and wants to drop in. Yeah. 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 So you've got some workshops planned, I think you were saying, haven't you? Um, so yes, I'm still continuing my online um, experimental drawing club. Uh, the next one's next Wednesday, so that's twice a month, first and third Wednesdays of the month. But um, come July, this space will be tidy <laughs> and uh, we'll have my new in-person workshop. So I know we've got people from all over the world here, but um, anybody local who fancies a day out in South End on Sea, I've got some of my workshops coming up there on my website. Um, and yeah, I've got open studios as well coming up at the end of the month. Yeah, um, yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> and as for me, um, it's quite similar actually. Um, I'm doing an open studio on the 24th and 25th of July. So that will be here and in part way, sort of the rest of the house. And then on the Monday, immediately following that, I'm doing what I'm calling like a studio session. So it's not a, a kind of um, it's a, the kind of, um, it's a kind of workshop where you talk to me in advance about what it is that you want to do, and then I will work out a programme for you so that it's much more kind of designed around the individual, really. 
Um, so I'm hoping that you know people will be interested in that. And the thing about doing it, I thought immediately after the open studio, is that anybody who is interested in that can come and stay in Buxton because there's some really nice little hotels mm-hmm. and it's a lovely little town to stay in. You know, and there's lots of nice places to go and visit and stuff like that. So it might make a weekend of it really. And I know you know there's quite a lot of people that have joined us from around the world, so that's not relevant. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. there are also a few people from the UK for whom it might be. So, will yeah, you so there's doing, a couple of things. Will you be doing your open studios? Will you do a Zoom uh, call? Yeah. Yeah, not this time. I think what I'm going to do is kind of keep them a bit more separate. Um, so, you know, I'm going to do an in-person one in July because I've not done one for ages. Um, mm. You know, I've not had a chance to show the work in person for quite a long time. And then I think probably what I'll do is do an online one, maybe in September or sometime, something like that. Okay. So, you know, kind of alternate a little bit between them so that, um, yeah, so I kind of do the in-person and then do something that's online. It's quite a different sort of thing to do, really, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's the plan. Anyway, that's the plan. Cool. Um, has anybody got any questions or anything they want to share about today? Yeah, or- any last thoughts? <laughs> any last asks? Any last wants? That's a thought, actually. Is there anything anybody would like to see us do over the next few months? Because we're going to be sort of alternating with this. So back to Sally Ann's studio next month and then Mike back here. Next month. So, yeah, if you've got anything in particular that you see in my work, you'd be interested in me sharing I'd be happy to or so maybe have a little think about that and maybe drop us a message either Instagram or something like that or at the bottom of the YouTube video because it'll be on YouTube in the next couple of days so you can always let us know we're very happy to do that yeah I think for next month I might be working on um I'm going back to some 12 by 12 panels um just because I have an awful lot that are sort of midway so I think I'm going to get cracking with those and try and share some kind of how you started today with like when you're faced with that oh I've got these and <laughs> what can I yeah, do what we're going to do with it uh, yeah it's, it's an interesting one isn't it yeah see if I can make something of those <laughs> sounds good just having a anything else no nothing from anybody else we've still got 10 minutes left so for the last 10 minutes I should go back to my painting might as well yeah while people still watch um, I'm going to just do a bit more fiddling with one, not fiddling, because we don't fiddle, do we? We don't fiddle. <laughs> Fiddling's bad. I'll continue to just work on it for a few minutes whilst we've still got a few more minutes left. So I'll share screen. I think half it. the time we do whatever we, whatever we yeah, can. I know, I know. Whatever comes out. I'm really glad I found this actually, and that is I just tried to do something with it. It irks me when <laughs> you know when things kind of get left and you feel like you can't do anything with it. That's something underneath actually. This is probably not the most exciting thing to watch. Mm. I'm scraping arduously at bits of oil my stomach. I think I've got some oil pastel underneath here actually, because it's, yeah, it's actually the paint off a bit. Do you think? Do you feel like you're going to continue for a little while after we close this call? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to carry on with this one and these other two. Actually, well, I'll, I'll move all the cameras and the computer and the lights so I don't get paint on them. But then I'm definitely going to, um, yeah, because it feels really nice to be in here. Actually, you know, painting away it feels really good. Actually, nice. Yeah. We're having lots of uh, thanks come into the chat and Danielle's just said it's a bit like a Twitch art stream. Um, I was going to start a Twitch art stream. I've sort of got my page set up, but I haven't uh, gone through with it yet. I don't even know what that is. What is that? Well, Twitch is, uh, I mean, it's predominantly used for uh, gamers. Um, Oh, okay. 
and uh, they sort of just share it's literally just a cake like we're doing now just put a camera on and sort of you're chatting away um yeah but um when I first started looking into it I just didn't feel that I I didn't know but I didn't I thought it was mostly for gaming and stuff and I just thought oh how many people are going to be interested in yeah. you know watching this but then I read a few things um I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the abundant artist um he does lots of webinars and stuff and he'd said um you know artists will see more artists streaming in yeah. 2021 so you know maybe maybe it's a thing well it definitely is a thing but it's just whether you want to do it but yeah I think when I'm better set up and organized in the studio I might oh Danielle's already using it uh, Danielle, one of um, she's already started using it. Um, how is it, Danielle? Do you want to? I mean, feel free to type, or you can come off mute and share how it's been. I think sometimes it's. I mean, I keep. I'm trying to move over to YouTube as well, and sometimes it's just a bit we get so used to a platform that we're comfortable with don't we and we have like you know yeah. you're with it. it's like me with Instagram and I, I like it but it's to, you, to spread your wings a bit you've got to sort of yeah, you know move. move a little bit um yeah yes that's true I think that's very true I feel some pencil coming on um so the the twitch review is it's been fun i enjoy the interaction with people it's been a very welcoming community but it is overwhelming as well um that's nice to hear that about the community is, is really welcoming. When you say overwhelming, do you mean the tech for it? I think things like this, Lynn, are really good. And for anybody else who is, you know, like, doing more live stuff or raising their profile things like this and liaising with other artists on a <clears throat> smaller scale is yeah one of the great ways to start things um and just build confidence you know and start of I'm used to some techie some like double cameras and stuff because yeah. that's kind of really daunting found it <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> that's right. Graphite stick. Oh, the graphite stick. Oh, nice. So, yeah, so. Yeah, I hear you, Danielle, about the tech. I felt a bit like that, um, but I'm going to, I'll go back and persevere I think <laughs> maybe after the summer <laughs> thank you for sharing your thoughts yeah okay well that's already added lots more um it does doesn't it intricacy yeah down by the lower um yeah, yeah. lower left yeah this is a thing I seem to be doing quite a bit of at the moment lots of this kind of crisscrossy kind of stuff oh I love lines Lynn <laughs> <laughs> it's great, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. They just bring the painting to the life, I think. Your eye can just like travel with them, you know? I just yeah. find them fascinating. Okay. And there we go, minutes two. That's. Thank you, everybody, so much for um, for joining us, and thank you, Lynn, for demoing. And I felt this um, this has been really relaxing for me to to watch. What I'm do is just move it a bit closer so that you can perhaps just do the last.
Oh, just let's just get a bit more of the painting aside. And we'll just square onto it so you can see it. Mm, nice. And you know, right in the middle, um, just where the light blue starts, is there, um, yeah, in that patch, is there an underpainting under that? Is there like a square? It looks like there's a ledge coming in off that um, orange yeah. little jut. Yeah. Is yeah, there? There's different colours. Yeah, that, that is not one colour. It's all ah, yes, yes, like yes. a grey and a pale blue and yeah. kind of really lightish nice. creamy. Yeah. yeah, again, it's one of those things that you can't really tell until you get yeah. close to it. We can in real see life from uh, from further away, but when you've just stood there and you made the shadow over it, we can see the different uh, variations in that. That's yeah. really cool. Oh, cool. Okay, there you go. I'll stop sharing. Okay, guys, thank you very much for joining us, and hope you can join us next month. And we will post this on YouTube probably in the next couple of days. I would imagine. Thanks, everybody. Take thank care, you. everybody. Bye. Okay, have a great bye weekend. You, everybody. Okay, see you then. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye bye. Bye. I think that's it. That's everybody. Okay. okay. Brilliant. Ah, that was really nice, Lynn. Like, really lovely session. I thought it went really well, too. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, brilliant. And looking bye. forward to next time. Yes, I will see you soon. Have fun for the rest of the day.